welcome to the YouTube live class for another class of botany for class 12. Myself Dr. S. S. Sardar from RD Women's HSS Bhubaneswar and today we are going to the going to discuss the last portion of molecular biology that is gene expression and its regulation. So, what does it mean by gene regulation and gene expression? So, before going to regulation of gene expression, we should know what is gene expression. So, the gene expression is the mechanism at the molecular level by which genes are able to express themselves or to express the phenotype of the organism. So, it consists of transcription, translation, conversion of polypeptide to structural and functional proteins. That means, the proteins which which will act as functional proteins like enzymes, structural proteins like membrane proteins. So, they will express into a phenotypic expression or it, they will express into a phenotype. So, in other words, gene expression is the process by which information from a gene is used in the synthesis of a functional gene product that enables it to produce the end product which can be a protein or a non-coding RNA and ultimately affect a phenotype as the final effect. So, what is the product actually? These products are generally proteins, but many times these are not proteins rather non-coding RNAs or the RNAs like T RNAs, small nuclear RNAs like uh, ribosomal RNAs and this also will help in producing a functional polypeptide or a functional protein. So, it the product of the gene expression can be a protein or it can be a non-coding RNA, but ultimately this is the, the end product is a functional gene product. That means, a functional gene product means that can be a functional protein or a structural protein or a non-coding RNA like rRNA, tRNA, small nuclear RNAs, rRNAs like this. Okay. So, if we will go diagrammatically, now what happens? We already have discussed the central dogma of molecular biology. Now, what it says? Now, the dogma says the DNA gives rise to a copy of mRNA or any RNA, then it gives rise to a copy of polypeptide and this is the central dogma. Now, what happens here? Now, this is transcription, the process of conversion of mRNA or the process of synthesis of RNA from a segment of DNA is called as transcription. Now, the process of synthesis of polypeptide from mRNA is called as translation. So, both of these the transcription and translation, both transcription and translation, these are what? These are the gene expression. Gene means this is a segment of DNA. That segment when it will be uh, converted into a form of RNA, then into a form of protein. Now, this is called a gene expression. That means, the segment of DNA is expressed in different forms like non-coding RNA or coding RNA and finally, to a functional polypeptide or a structural polypeptide. So, the transcription translation, these are the labels of gene expression. So, what we can say the transcription as the first label of gene expression. Okay? So, transcription is the first label of gene expression and translation we can consider as the second label of gene expression, but there are many other steps. Now, in case of prokaryotes it is ok. But after the translation process, the polypeptide also undergoes certain changes which we call as post translational modification. So, while we have discussed the transcription and translation, we have uh, covered up or we have acquired knowledge about a post transcriptional modifications of RNA and a post translational modifications of proteins. Okay. So, 
we can divide the transcription or the central dogma into a elaborative central dogma. So, what is that elaborative central dogma? Let us see. Now, here you see this is the DNA. Now, it is comprised of some intronic regions like this green portions, okay? this green portions. Now, when it will be transcribed in the process of transcription, okay? now the DNA copy will produce a copy of mRNA no doubt, but it will also include this exons and introns and it. So, the mRNA now after the transcription process, the press mRNA that is produced is called as a pre mRNA or a pre matured mRNA, because it also comprises of the intronic reason and we have know what are the intronic reason. These are the non coding reasons of uh, a gene which are not uh, what uh, these are the interrupted uh, segments of genes <coughs> which does not take part in the protein synthesis. So, they have to be removed out before the mRNA undergoes the process of translation. So, what happens here? So, this exonic reason all these green reasons they have to be cut out. So, how they will be cut out? So, they will be cut out by the help of some kind of modificational process. Okay. This is called as RNA splicing. But apart from RNA splicing, we also have many other kind of modificational process. So, togetherly we call it as post transcriptional modifications. Okay. So, RNA splicing is a post transcriptional modification. So, after transcription this is post transcriptional modifications, post transcriptional modifications. Now, next now the mRNA is now ex, is, uh, very much ready to take out the process of protein synthesis, but it has to come out of the environment of nucleus and it has to reach to the environment of cytoplasm. So, what happens here once the mRNA reaches here, now why the help of ribosomes, tRNA and all that we have already discussed. Now, they will go on synthesizing a protein and that is the process known as translation that we already have discussed. So, the protein after this is just a string of polypeptide, okay, but it will undergo a folding process, it will undergo a folding process either into a structural protein or into a functional protein or into enzymes. So, this step is known as post translational modifications. Okay. So, now let us uh, discuss again what is the elaborative uh, what is the elaborative central dogma of molecular biology. So, what is that? Now, from DNA a copy of RNA is processed or a copy of RNA is produced by the process of transcription. This copy of RNA may undergoes many kind of modifications which are called as post transcriptional modifications. Then the mRNA now is ready for translation and after the polypeptide is synthesized, it also undergoes many post translational modification. So, let us have a look on another uh, point. Now, here again you see this is the DNA, this is the primary transcript after the cutting of the intronic reasons, now it becomes the mRNA. Okay. Now, you see this is the transcriptional control or this is the process of transcription and this is the process of RNA processing. The RNAs are of three type mRNA, tRNA and rRNA and all the RNAs can be processed in different ways. So, they all will constitute a post transcriptional modification. Apart from that, now in eukaryotes there is a there is a process of splicing, a process of 5 prime cap addition and a process of 3 prime polyethyl addition that we already have discussed. So, again now from this now the RNA is transported and there is 
translation and after that there is some post translational modification. So, what happens a DNA whether it will be expressed into an RNA copy or not that will be decided by the cell, its environment and its conditions required ok and this exposes the regulation of gene expression. So, once again what is gene expression? Gene expression is the expression of gene or the expression of the DNA segment into on into a copy of RNA or finally into a copy of a structural or functional protein whatever a protein ok. This is called a gene expression that means a DNA to a protein is called a gene expression whatever steps are there they are all being included in gene expression. But whether the gene is whether the gene is to be expressed or not that will be decided at several points like it may be decided whether the DNA will be uh, transcribed into a RNA or not that will be decided and there is a checkpoint. So, this will be called as transcriptional checkpoint or transcriptional control that decides whether this DNA will be converted into a copy of primary transcript or not that will be decided by the transcriptional control. Okay. Now, let us suppose it uh, surpasses this step or it undergoes this step and it forms a primary transcript. Now, whether this primary transcript will undergo into a some post transcriptional modifications or not again there will be a checkpoint. So, again there will be a regulation in the gene expression. So, what is that point called as? Now, this is the RNA processing control. Similarly, now RNA transport control is there that means the RNA has to come out from the environment of nucleus to the environment of cytosol this is also being controlled. Then the mRNA whether it will be converted into a protein or polypeptide or not that will be decided by the translational control or at this point and again whether that protein will be converted into functional protein or not again that will be decided by another point called as post transcriptional modification. So, there are several checkpoints like transcriptional control, RNA processing control, RNA transport control, translational control and another point is post translational control. So, these labels of gene expressions are being regulated and it is as per the conditions of the cell ok. So, let us have a look what is gene regulation of gene expression. Gene expression is regulated in some genes known as regulated genes that means some genes they always undergoes expression and they are called as constitutive genes whereas most of the genes they are regulated because if the cell does not require their expression. So, why to undergo uh, unnecessary expenditure of energy? So, that is why the gene is regulated or the gene expression is regulated in regulated genes. So, which do not express their effects all the time in all the cells. So, only <coughs> the constitutive genes can be expressed at any time, but the regulated genes they has to be expressed at a particular point of time at a particular point of development and whenever the cell requires it does not mean that whenever they like they will express themselves. So, what happens here as per the need of the cell the genes are expressed they do not express themselves whenever they like ok. So, <coughs> thus the gene regulation is a mechanism of switching on and switching off the gene depending upon the requirement of the cells and the state of development. So, the gene expression is something like a process like switching on and switching off ok. So, let us suppose I want to get my lights on I will just switch on my switches. Then if I want to get rid of this light then I will go for switching off. So, the gene expression is something like that whenever the genes want to express themselves then they will go for a switching on mode. Now, when they will not be expressed they will undergo a switching off mode. So, it is something like switching on switching off and it is as per the requirement of the cell 
and uh, what uh, the requirement of the cell and the state of development of the cell. So, there are two types of gene expression or gene regulation, one is induction, the another one is repression. Induction is being held by inducers, inductions means now it has to be switched on. Okay. So, because of some kind of inducers, now the gene is to be expressed. Repression means because of some kind of repressure proteins or some kind of regulatory factors, now the gene expression has to be stopped, it has to be repressed. So, it is called as repression. So, gene regulation, now gene regulation, uh, this uh, gene expression and its regulation is a very complicated phenomenon okay. and it happens both in prokaryotes and in eukaryotes. The eukaryotic gene expression and its regulation is highly complicated, but the prokaryotic gene regulations and the expression, the expression and its regulation it is somewhat simpler than the <coughs> prokaryotic sorry than the eukaryotic regulation. So, we will discuss about the gene regulation in prokaryotes. So, what is that? Now, gene regulation in prokaryotes is most extensively observed at the step of initiation of transcription. As I told you, now whether the gene is to be expressed or not, it will be regulated at several points. Now, what are the points? The points can be a transcription, it can be a post transcriptional modifications or RNA processing uh, point. It can be RNA transport point, it can be a translational point or it can be also a post translational point. So, we have several points. So, in eukaryotes all the several points are being used for regulation of gene expression, but in case of prokaryotes as this is a very miniature organisms or their microorganisms mostly. Now, they do not undergo several energy expenditure processes that means, they will not take a route that they will come up to the last point and they will undergo for a regulation of gene expression. Rather, they will stop the expression or they will regulate the gene expression at the first level of gene expression that is transcription. Okay. So, that is that is the thing that we have we are discussing here that gene regulation in prokaryotes is most extensively observed at the point of initiation of transcription. That means, whether a gene has to be expressed or not that will be decided only at the point of transcription. If we will check at the point of initiation of transcription, then it will be repressed. If it will not be checked, now it will be expressed. Okay. So, the gene expression during transcription initiation is affected or affected by regulation. So, regulation of gene expression in case of prokaryote, it is regulated or it is checked at the point of what? Initiation of transcription. So, transcription is the point at which it can be regulated. So, once the process of initiation is started, now there is no point of reverting back. Okay. So, it will go on expressing one after another and finally, being converted into a functional protein. Now, the regulation usually takes place in the expression of the RNA polymerase at the promoter site. We already have discussed regarding transcription. Now, what is the promoter? This is the site at which the RNA polymerase protein or the RNA polymerase enzyme, it binds to the promoter site and it affects the process of transcription. So, that a copy of RNA transcript will be formed or it will be synthesized and it will be synthesized by whom? It will be synthesized by the RNA polymerase enzyme. Now, this affects the accessory proteins which bind to the recognition site and these accessory proteins can regulate the promoter site in two ways. So, for regulating uh, a gene expression or for regulating the expression of a gene, now we require some regulatory factors and these regulatory factors decide whether the gene has to be expressed or not, whether the gene has to be undergo the process of transcription or not. Because in prokaryotes, the first level of gene expression is, al is always being regulated, not the second way of 
gene expression that is translation. So, in this two ways now one is a positive regulation another one is a negative regulation. Positive regulation is affected or is affected by uh, what activators and negative regulation is affected by repressions. Okay. So, gene regulation in prokaryotes now there are lots of regulation of gene expressions are there in prokaryotes, but in our syllabus or the famous model of a gene a regulation of gene expression is, be, is best explained in the LAC operon system. Okay. So, here the gene regulation in prokaryotes can be explained with the help of LAC operon model. So, we will now discuss the LAC operon model as a model of regulation of gene expression how it is being regulated uh, by a positive kind of regulation and by a negative kind of regulation as we have discussed here. So, there is a positive regulation and there is a negative regulation and this two ways of regulation that is positive and negative this two, way, two ways of regulations is seen in case of LAC operon. Now, here the alteration is physiolo in physiological and environmental conditions can be observed leading to an alteration in expressions in prokaryotes. So, it was observed. So, who was the scientist who discovered or who have uh, worked extensively on this LAC operon model? They were Jacob and Monad. So, what they seen now LAC operon is an operon. So, what is an operon exactly? The operon is a segment of DNA which has many structural genes, but it has a single regulatory reason and a single promoter from which the transcription begins and it goes on transcribing all the structural gene into the RNA transcript and this transcript is called as polysystemic mRNA because many of the systems are present in a single mRNA that we will discuss. So, how it is polysystemic. So, let us have uh, a look what is the LAC operon exactly. Now, LAC operon is an operon or a group of genes with a single promoter as I said you right now that it has a single promoter that encodes genes for the transport and metabolism of lactose in E. coli or in Escherichia coli. And other bacteria too. It is not that it is only present in E. coli, but other bacteria they also have lac operon system. So, once again lac operon is an operon or a group of genes with a single promoter that encodes genes for the transport and metabolism of lactose in E. coli and other prokaryotic bacteria. So, what are the reasons that we found in lac operon? Now, lac operon has four reasons. One is a lac I gene or a regulatory gene, then the second one is an operator gene, third one is a promoter reason and the fourth one is the portion which comprises of three structural genes. Okay. So, what are the portions from starting one end to another end or from 5 prime to 3 prime end of the segment of DNA is a regulatory gene uh, that is lac I gene, then a promoter reason, an operator reason and many structural genes or three structural genes. Now, let us have a look what are the three structural genes. The structural gene consists of a Z gene, a Y gene and a A gene. Okay. Now, what are these? Now, it codes for beta the Z gene. What is the Z gene exactly? It codes for beta galactosidase enzyme, which catalyzes the hydrolysis of lactose into glucose and galactose. Okay. And Y gene, it codes for a permease, which regulates the lactose permeability in the cell. That means, it allows the lactose to come inside the cell and lactose can be utilized or it can be utilized as a source of energy when there is no glucose in the surrounding area or in the surrounding regions. Now, A zine it codes for a transacetylase which assists the enzyme 
beta galactositis okay so these are the three genes one is z gene that is a beta galactositis enzyme and this catalyzes the uh, conversion or the hydrolysis of lactose to glucose and galactose then there is a y gene which is a permeazine that allows the permeability of lactose in to the cell and there is a a gene which is a transacetylazine and this assists the beta galactosidase enzymes activity. So, now what is that? Now, let us have a look on the lac operon. Now, it looks like this. Okay. Now, this is a segment of DNA. This is a DNA segment from this end to this end. Now, you see <coughs> from this is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end and it executes both a positive kind of regulation and a negative kind of regulation a positive regulation and a negative regulation. So, before going to going into the details of the regulation we should know what is the exact structure of lac operon. So, from the phi prime end it has a cap binding site okay. it has a cap binding site from the phi prime end next to that there is a lac isine that is otherwise called as what a regulatory zine and this is constitutive in nature that means it always or it constantly synthesizes the lac repressor or the repressor protein which is a tetramer and this tetrameric protein which uh, will assemble into a tetramer then only it becomes active. Okay. So, the repressor protein is active in the form of a tetramer and it is being synthesized constitutively that means continuously. So, next to that is a promoter site. So, this is the promoter and this O is the what? This O is the operator. Okay. So, once again cap binding site regulatory gene or this two togetherly will be, consider, will be considered as the regulatory portion then promoter, operator and this three, okay, these are the structural genes, okay, these are the structural genes. Now, the Z gene, it, uh, what it, uh, it codes for beta galactosidase enzyme, then Y gene it codes for Parmias and A gene it codes for transacetylase, okay. So, this is the structure of the lac operon. Okay. Next, we will see how it is being regulated. So, the lac operon contains genes involved in the catabolism of lactose. That means, how the lactose will be hydrolyzed to glucose and galactose that is the main focus of lac operon. So, the genes are expressed only when lactose is present and glucose is absent that means when in the surrounding glucose is absent and lactose is present then only your lac operon will be expressed or otherwise it will not be expressed if plenty of glucose is present and even if a small amount of lactose is present or plenty amount of lactose is present it will not be expressed it is it will be only expressed when glucose is absent and lactose is present in plenty amount. Okay. So, the operon is turned on and off in response to glucose and lactose labels and it has two kind of uh, what regulatory protein which actually switch on the gene expression and switch up the gene expression. So, what is that? One is a catabolite activator protein or in short it is called as cap. In short, it is called as CAP, catabolite activator protein and a lac repressor. Okay, and there is another protein called as lac repressor protein. Now, what happens? The lac repressor blocks the transcription of the operon in the presence of lactose. It stops acting as, okay. the lac repressor, it stops the expression of lac operon when glucose is present and lactose is absent. But in presence of lactose, now the lac repressure cannot bind 
or it cannot effect the repression of gene expression. Okay. Whereas, the catabolite activator protein or the cap, it activates the transcription of the operon only when glucose is absent or its labels are very low. Okay. So, we will see how this will, how this goes on switching on and switching off. The lac operon exhibits both negative control and positive control. Under negative control, a regulatory factor is needed to prevent the expression of the gene of lac operon, whereas under the positive control, a regulatory factor is needed to express or to permit the expression of the lac operon. Okay. So, how the negative control is affected or it is affected? Now, I will uh, tell you diagrammatically before going to that. Uh, let me just explain you. Now, negative control says that now any kind of control, two kind of controls are there in case of lac operon. One is a negative control, the another one is a positive control. Now, both negative and positive control is affected by the presence of the labels of lactose and glucose. Only in absence of glucose or uh, in very low concentration of glucose or very at a very low label of glucose, the lac operon will be expressed by the positive control. But when glucose is present at a very high amount, then it will be controlled in a negative way. That means, it will undergo a negative control. So, what happens here in the negative control? Now, the lactose, even if the lactose is present, no problem but the glucose level should be high. So, in the presence of glucose, now the lac repressor proteins, they are activated and they bind to the promoter site. It blocks the promoter region or it blocks the attachment of the RNA polymerase, so that the RNA transcript cannot be formed. Okay. So, let us read it. Now, the condition is when glucose is present only in the surrounding it prevents the expression of lac operon. Even if lactose is present, no problem. But it will undergo a negative control and the glucose label, it decides that the repressure protein, it should bind to the operator side. How? If lactose is absent and glucose is present, the gene products from the lac operon are not needed because glucose is plentily, avail uh, is plentily available. So, why to go for lactose catabolism? So, thus a regulatory factor, the repressor protein, it prevents the lac operon expression. Since the repressor is produced constitutively and spontaneously, it assembles as its active tetrameric form. It is available to bind to the operon and prevent the transcription. So, what happens here? Now, the repressor protein binds to the operator site. It blocks the promoter and the attachment of the RNA polymerase. If the RNA polymerase cannot bind to the promoter site, so there will be no transcription. So, this is a negative regulation. So, the negative regulation says that the repressure protein binds to the operator and uh, the RNA polymerase cannot bind to the promoter site and the transcription process is blocked or it is not initiated. Now, the positive control says that when the lactose level is high, it permits the expression of lac operon and if no glucose is there. Now, if no glucose is present and lactose is present, the gene products from the lac operon are needed to use the lactose for energy. Thus, a regulatory factor called as CAP and CAMP complex. Now, CAP we know this is catabolite activator protein. It binds with a cyclic AMP and this cyclic AMP is a starvation uh, indicator. Okay. That means, the glucose is not present there 
and uh, we are starving of glucose. So, that is why the CAMP is produced and the CAMP forms a complex with the cap protein and this is called as cap CMP complex and this is needed to permit the expression of the operon because CMP is a starvation signal indicating as an absence of glucose it is available to form the cap CMP complex and permit the transcription. How it permits because the cap CMP now it also binds to the RNA polymerase and it facilitates the binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter site. Now, let us have a look on this diagram. Now, you see this is the negative regulation where you see that there is the before the promoter site there is lac isine now which will give rise to the lac repressor protein and this lac repressor protein binds to the operator site. Now, once the operator site is blocked now this RNA polymerase it cannot bind to the promoter so that there is no transcription. Now, so, there is there will be no transcription there will be no transcription of any of the structural genes present on the lac operon and this operator site is being blocked. Now, in case of so this is the negative kind of regulation and then in the so then this is a positive regulation. So, in case of positive regulation now the lac operon here there is a cap site. So, to the cap site this is the cap and this is the CAMP complex. Now, they will bind to the RNA polymerase they will bring up the RNA polymerase to the promoter site and the promoter site will be attached with the RNA polymerase and there will be no blocking or the repressure protein does not or it cannot what block the operator site. So, that now so that now there will be synthesis of what the mRNA transcript. So, this is a positive regulation and this happens in absence of in absence of glucose and presence of presence of what lactose. Now, when lactose is present and glucose is absent this lactose will be converted to allolactose and the allolactose will act as a inducer and this inducer inactivates inactivates this inducer inactivates the repressor protein so that the repressor protein cannot bind to the operator site ok. So, when glucose is absent and lactose is present lactose is converted to allolactose allolactose acts as an inducer. Now, this inducer allolactose will inactivate the repressor protein how because the repressor protein it is activated in a tetrameric form. So, it will not allow the formation of this active tetrameric form of the repressor protein and it cannot bind to the operator site ok. So, so here this is the positive regulation and another positive regulation is that along with this now this cap CAMP complex they will bind to the RNA polymerase and they will bring up the RNA polymerase to the site of promoter and here as there would be no repressure operator uh, what binding. So, the RNA polymerase will go on synthesizing what the mRNA transcript. So, transcription is affected. So, this is all about the regulation of gene expression in case of lac apparent how it is positively regulated and how it is negatively regulated. So, this is all about the gene expression and its regulation. Apart from that next we will go to human genome project. Now, what is human, human genome project? Now, before going to that we must discuss about genome then genomics then human genome project. Now, what is genome? 
a haploid set of chromosomes in a cell constitute the genome of the species. Now, let us suppose in human beings, now we have 46 numbers of chromosome. Now, what we have? We have two sets of 23 chromosomes. So, this 23 chromosome of one set, it comprises of a genome. Now, all the genes which are present within this 23 chromosomes of a single set, which comes from the maternal side, the other comes from the paternal side. So, only the haploid set of chromosomes, they comprises of the genome. So, in a diploid organisms, we have two genomes. Okay. So, what is genomics? The study of genomes and genes best term DNA sequencing is called as genomics. Now, basing upon the genome and genomics, a human genome project was designed and it started in 1990 and it ended at 2003 or it is completed at in 2003 by the US Department of Energy and National Institute of Health and it is the ever uh, is the ever longest project that has been undertaken till today. Okay. So, the biggest project undertaken to date is the human genome project. Now, what are the objective of this project? Now, objective is obviously being a human, we should know what kind of genes we have. Now, what is our genome structure completely? Now, what are the different gene forms? what are the disorders that may happen within this gene and how we can control these disorders. This is the actual objective of the human genome project. So, what are the objectives precisely let us discuss and let us read out to develop the techniques for mapping the human genome precisely, to determine the functions of all the genes and to identify the genes causing any disorder. Okay. So, if we are being diseased because of some gene or the other, we should know what is the nature of that gene. So, to store the information in the database for and develop tools or data analysis. Now, what happens? We can store that means the total, this is just a physical map of the total genome. That means, we have 23 uh, haploid set of chromosomes. Now, within this 23 chromosomes, now what are the different genes present from one chromosome to 23 chromosome. Okay. So, all the chromosomes are being mapped from one end to another end and this is a physical mapping that that is in terms of nucleotide base sequences or nucleotide sequences okay. and it, uh, it can be referred to the different genes and all the genes which can uh, what uh, helps in the functioning of our body and the meta it is controlling the metabolism of our body. So, this data should be stored in a very protective way and it should be analyzed whenever required. Okay. So, the third objective is to store this information in the database and develop tools for data analysis. Then to transport this technology to other sectors like industries. So, these are the objective of human genome project. Now, what are the salient features of this human genome project is that the total human genome, it consists of 3164.7 million nucleotide bases. Can you imagine 3164.7 million nucleotide bases and we have the average gene, the average gene consists of 3000 bases. Now, the uh, one gene is there which is called as dystropin, which has the maximum number of bases within it. And we have 30,000 numbers of genes. Can you imagine? Now, the total number of genes is estimated to be 30,000 in case of humans. Now, you just imagine we have 30,000 numbers of genes within us, okay. but 50 percent of the genes and its functioning or and its uh, what function is unknown to us till date. Okay. So, the functions are unknown for over 50 percent of the discovered gene. 
So, we have discovered 30,000 or it is estimated to be 30,000 numbers of genes, but out of this we only know about 50 percent of genes, uh, what is its function, how it, uh, how it functions, how it is regulated, something like that. But apart from that, 50 percent of the genes and its functions we are unaware of, okay. And less than 2 percent of the genome, if the genome is 100 percent, then less than 2 percent of genome is within the coded region or it codes for proteins. Now, that means out of this uh, what huge human genome, now only less than 2 percent they codes for protein. Can you imagine only 2 percent or even less than 2 percent they codes for protein and rest of the 98 percent or more than 98 percent they does not code for any protein. They are just repetitive sequences, they are just non-coding sequences. Okay. And this non-coding sequences, the human genome consists of or contains this last repetitive sequence which are non-coding in nature. So, what is it function? If we, if we will go to analyze the function of this non-coding sequences or this repetitive sequences, then we can just analyze or we can just conclude that they throw light on the chromosome structure, its dynamics and its evolution. That means, how the chromosomes have evolved out of or in a very long run of time. Okay. This repetitive sequences that tells us about the evolution of the chromosome. Then what are the other features? The other features are like, now how many chromosomes are there? 23 pairs. Now, they are being numbered as, now the 23 pairs will be numbered as 1, 1 prime, 2, 2 prime, 3, 3 prime like this, okay, because they are homologous to each other. So, one half it comes from the maternal side, the other half it comes from the paternal side. So, what happens here and the final one is x and y, okay, either x, x or x and y. So, out of this the chromosome number 1 or 1 prime, whatever it may be, it has the most number of genes and it is 2968, whereas the least number of genes are found in the Y chromosome and it has the fewest genes which counts to 231 numbers of genes. Okay. So, these are the salient features. Once again, now there are 3164.7 million nucleotide bases and the uh, genes uh, consist of on an average the gene consists of 3000 bases. Then it is estimated to have we have 30,000 numbers of genes out of which 50 percent of the genes are undiscovered, their functions are undiscovered and uh, less than 2 percent of the genome they codes for protein. Most of the genome has non-coding reason or repetitive sequences which tells us about the structure of chromosome, their dynamics and their evolution. And finally, the chromosome 1 has the most number of genes and Y has the fewest numbers of genes. Now, what is the advantage of human genome project? Now, the advantage is being it provides the clues to understand human biology. Of course, it provides clues to understand the human biology. Now, next the effect of DNA variation can be studied among individuals which can lead to revolutionary new ways to diagnose and treat many disorders or diseases. And finally, more information can be obtained about the non-human organisms like yeast, bacteria, fruit fly, rice, etc. Because the human genome project puts the light that any genome, that means the genome of any organism, any species, any individual can be mapped. So, the human genome project gives a pathway that the other genomes can also be discovered. So, it puts the light about the non-human organisms like yeast, bacteria, fruit fly, rice. Now, till now many of the plants and animals genome has been well discovered and well established and the database is being stored uh, sorry and all the data and informations they are being stored in the database. 
So, this is the advantage of human genome project. Next we will go, go for DNA fingerprinting. So, what is fingerprinting? Now, we have our own fingerprint. Now, each individual's fingerprint it differs from another's. Similarly, the DNA content of an individual it differs from another individual. So, in order to construct that fingerprint of the DNA of a particular individual is called as DNA fingerprinting. So, in precise distinguishing the individuals according their DNA prints pattern is called as DNA fingerprinting. Now, how it will be done we will discuss. Now, it was developed by Alec Zaffari in 1984 and he is known as the father of DNA fingerprinting. Now, what is the basis of this DNA fingerprinting is that now the basis is the satellite DNA. These are uh, a kind of repetitive DNA or satellite DNAs which are present from individuals to individuals they differ also. So, satellite DNAs are unique to an individual. So, satellite DNAs of different individuals are hybridized with a, a single type of radioactive level probe DNA by using southern blotting method. Then an autoradiogram is taken to get a DNA fingerprinting or print pattern of the individuals. From this DNA print pattern, the individuals are distinguished on the basis of the bands in their DNA print. So, this is the basis of DNA fingerprinting. Now, what are the steps of the DNA fingerprinting is that, so first of all we have to isolate the DNA from the individual. So, the first step is the isolation of DNA, the second step is restriction, digestion and its PCR amplification, third step is gel electrophoresis, then southern blood blotting, then selection of a DNA probe, its hybridization then autoradiography and analysis of DNA print pattern. Okay. So, what happens here? So, first of all we have to isolate the DNA from the individuals whom we want to uh, what interview. So, after isolating we have to undergo or we have to uh, what treat those DNA that total genomic DNA by restriction endonuclease enzyme which will cut the long DNA fragments or which will cut the long DNA into short short fragments. And if we if necessary we may go for PCR amplification. If the DNA content is very low then we will go for PCR amplification. Now, after amplifying through the PCR then what we can do is we can go we can run those short short fragment of DNA uh, under a gel or within a gel and this process is called as gel electrophoresis. So, the gel electrophoresis will give you an impression of this and the DNA short fragments they will be what uh, they will be uh, they will come as this fragments like this. Then we have to go for southern blotting that means by taking a nitrocellulose filter paper now we can just put that paper over here and we will take out this DNA bands into the nitrocellulose paper. Then we can uh, what dry that nitrocellulose paper, then we will select a DNA probe to which we will hybridize this DNA probes to this DNA. So, before hybridization now this uh, blotted DNA in the southern blotting or this DNA has to be uh, what converted into a single stranded DNA form. So, we will go for alkali digestion. Okay, we will put it in alkaline solution so that the double stranded DNA will be converted to single stranded form. Now, the DNAs are ready for hybridization with the probe. Now, this probe they actually uh, are being designed in such a way that they will go and they will hybridize to the satellite DNA. Okay. So, whenever satellite DNAs are present this probe DNA will hybridize with them. So, after that we will filter the hybridization. So, we will filter hybridization means now after hybridization we will try to remove remove out the <coughs> non hybridized probe okay, and then we will go for an autoradiography. 
So, when we will go for an autoradiography, we will get some pictures like this and counting or analyzing the DNA print pattern, we may conclude that what kind of individuals this are. Okay. So, what will happen? So, what are the application site of DNA fingerprinting is that it is, uh, it is being designed to settle dispute of parentage. Okay. It is uh, being designed to settle murder cases, to settle rape rapis cases, then for pedigree analysis, for migration pattern and for genetic analysis. So, this is all about the gene expression and its regulation, human genome project and DNA finger printing. So, with this we conclude our course, the second unit or the, uh, the portion that is molecular biology of second unit. So, very thanks to you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a very nice day and all the best for your upcoming examinations. अच्छा अच्छा